Hi everyone, it's Mr. Hamilton here. This video is all about periodic functions. What you see in front of you are all the different labeled parts of a wave. We're also going to get into the fact that periodic just means repeating. It doesn't have to be a wave like this. It can be any shape that continues to repeat. So I'm going to be working through a very short handout here. If you don't have that handout, you can see a link in the description and get that handout from that link. So here's our goal. We want to interpret and describe graphs that repeat at regular intervals. Periodic simply means repeating. If something has a period, it has something that repeats at regular intervals. So a periodic function is a function whose graph repeats itself at regular intervals. The period is the change in the independent variable over one cycle. The change in the one independent variable over one cycle. So I'll show you that on a graph in a second. Let's just define the other terms that we have on our screen right now. A trough is the minimum point or the lowest point. The minimum or the lowest point. And that, if it's repeating, it's going down to that point over and over and over again. So it's going to continue to reach that minimum point. And the peak is the maximum or highest points. Again, it's going to reach that maximum point if it's repeating over and over and over again. So that maximum occurs several times, however long you've graphed the graph. The last thing is the equation of the axis that we're going to look at here before we look at the graph. And that is a horizontal line that is midway. It's midway between the peak and the trough heights. So let's see what those look like on a graph. So first is the period. You can see the period labeled here. It's labeled from here all the way over to here. So it's the x distance from where we start one cycle to where we end one cycle. Now that doesn't have to be measured from this axis point. It could be measured from a maximum to a maximum. And that would be the same distance. That is also the period. It could also be measured from a minimum to a minimum. And that again is also a period. It doesn't have to be measured from one of those places, but generally those three locations are the best ones. The equation of the axis or the peak to peak or the trough to trough. Um, but it could also be measured from let's say here out to the point where we reach it again. Some of us might think it would be there, but that wouldn't have a full cycle completed yet. So it's going from here all the way out to there where it's at the same y value again and also on the way down. Those are all the same things. So those are all the periods and all the different ways we could represent the periods. It's the distance in the x-axis from one point to where we get to the same point in the same direction. So the next term was the peaks. The peaks are all the high points, which are already labeled there, and the troughs are all the low points. And they're multiple because we have this repeating pattern. The last term we've gone over so far is the equation of the axis, and that is this right here. The axis is labeled, but the equation of the axis is the y value that it is. So in this case, the equation of the axis is y equals 0 0.8. We generally call that the EOA, the equation of the axis. Now the other thing that you can see right above the graph that I haven't filled in the blank yet is the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance between the axis and a peak and a trough. So in other words, here's my axis right here, and it's the distance between that and a peak, that's the amplitude, or it's the distance between that and a trough, that's the amplitude there. In other words, it is half the distance vertically between a peak and a trough, right? If I went all the way from that peak here and I went all the way down here to the trough, which goes the way down to zero, negative 0 0.2, the amplitude is half that distance. So make sure we don't think the amplitude is that entire distance. That is neither. It's actually two times the amplitude for that distance that I've just labeled. So with that in mind, let's see if we can list the period amplitude and the equation of the axis for the graph above. Well, the period we can measure from this starting point right here to this point right here. That's probably the easiest way to measure it, though you could measure it any other way. But we're going from 0 all the way to 1. So the period is 1. In this case, it looks like a time, and I'm assuming the time might be in seconds. So it's 1 second. It would be helpful if that had it labeled. Let's say we've got seconds right there which means that's going to be a period of one second. The amplitude is how far it's going from the equation of the axis up to the peak or from the equation of the axis down to the trough. And so if you look at that amplitude here, you can see it's going from 0.8 to 1.8, which is a difference of one. Or if you look over here, you can see it's going from 
0.8 down to negative 0.2, which is also a difference of 1. It's not about being positive or negative. It's always a positive amplitude. So the amplitude is 1. And again, if that distance is in meters, it would be 1 meter. And then the equation of the axis we already know, noted, that is y equals 0 0.8. So let's talk quickly about one other thing, and that is the phase shift. Now this graph should look very similar to the one above, with a, one distinct difference amongst a few other small things. But this is the distinct difference, this phase shift. The phase shift is how far, how far it shifted over, how far it shifted over to a discernible location. Generally, when we're talking about a discernible location where we can decide where a period might start or something like that, it's at the equation of the axis, at a maximum, or at the equation of the axis going down as well, or at a minimum. So those locations that I've labeled there are all the places that are discernible locations that we would phase shift it to. So for example, this might have a, this wave would have an equation, which we'll go into later in the unit, but the wave to get that equation would have to be shifted over some distance in the x direction to have that discernible location where it's going up from the equation of the axis. So that's the phase shift. You'll notice I did that because some of you might think, well, is this not the minimum right here? Well, it's not. Look over here. It's actually going to continue to go way down to here, somewhere over here. And so we can't tell from what's graphed there. So we have to shift it over to a discernible location as shown. So that's the phase shift. And then the only thing I want to mention about this graph that we haven't seen already is this idea of wavelength. Sometimes if we're talking about how long a wave is, we talk about the period or the wavelength. Uh, for example, we have things like electromagnetic waves. The visible light that we see is an electromagnetic wave. Um, the radio waves that send radio signals, the microwaves in our microwave um, devices, all these kind of things are sending wavelengths. And so that's really the same thing as a period. But generally, when we're talking about a wavelength, that's a wave that's being sent out. But a period is a mapping of something that's happening usually over time. Now I encourage you to pause the video and think of some examples yourself of periodic motion. All right, here we go. I'm going to start listing some here. One would be an actual wave. A wave repeats itself. It's traveling through space and it is periodic. It's going over and over and over. If you think about a wave coming out of uh, from behind a, a boat or something like that, those are repeating waves. Uh, what about something in coding like looping? If you've ever coded and you've done loops, which are just repeating things that happen over and over and over until it breaks out of that loop, that's an example of it as well. Sound waves, we've already mentioned, are examples of periodic motion or something like that. Uh, we have a lunar cycle. Every 28 to 29 days, the moon goes once around the Earth. So that's a lunar cycle. We also have a solar cycle. Every 365.25 days, the sun goes around the Earth. That's also periodic motion. Clocks are periodic motion. Those clocks go through a 24-hour cycle. Some so clocks go through a 12-hour cycle. And then something like a metronome in music. Metronome. That's another example of a periodic cycle. And then a factory line. It might not be as obvious at first, but that's repeated over and over and over again, and we could map that out mathematically. All those are examples of periodic motion. Now we'll wrap up the video with looking at two quick examples of how these properties apply in certain situations. So this is the number of hours of daylight in Hudson's Bay, Canada. The further north you are in the northern hemisphere, the longer the summer days are and the shorter the winter days are. And so that means that if you were talking about the number of months since January 2020, and then the daylight goes up to 18.8 and down to 5.9, that in about January 1st, you'd be at about the lowest point. It's actually going to be December 21st, but that's pretty close to where we're starting. We're going to start right there at that lowest point. And then six months later, at the summer solstice, we're going to be at the highest amount of sunlight. And then you can see there that would be at 18.8. And then when we're back 12 months from where we began, we end up at the shortest day of the year again. And then we repeat that cycle over and over. And so if I was to draw that, it would look something that looks like this. And that is a curve that goes over and over every year for the shortest to the longest days of the year. Now, you might wonder, okay, well, 
what about some of the properties? Well, one of the properties is that we have to first identify the equation of the axis. And so the equation of the axis is equal to, or we could say rather that y is equal to, it's the maximum plus the minimum divided by two. It's the average of the top value and the bottom value, right? The middle is gonna be just the average of those two. So we're taking the average, and so we go 18.8, plus 5.9, and we divide that by 2, and we end up getting a value of 12.35. So y equals 12.35 is our equation of the axis. Well, the period, that should be fairly obvious from what we have right now, that's 12 months, one year. It's always good to put it in terms of the values that you have on the x-axis. So some of you might say, well, the period's a year. We'll put it in terms of the months because that's what we have on the x-axis. You might also have a situation where instead of modeling it in months, you could have days on the x-axis and it would look the same, the same curve because of that throughout the year. But the period in that case would be 365 days. So the last thing that we want to mention here is the amplitude. And the amplitude is half the distance from the top to the bottom. And so what we could do here is the amplitude is always determined by taking the maximum minus the minimum divided by two because it's half of that difference in those values. And so what you get there is you get a value of 18.8. In this case, we're subtracting 5.9. And if you divide that by two, you end up getting a value of 6.45. So there you go. We've got our equation of axis, a period, and our amplitude. We've been able to identify all those with that graph. So the last example I want to look at is a machine cutting metal in a factory. Imagine you have this big roll of metal and it's being unrolled at a constant speed in a factory. And what they want to do is chop that into equal lengths of metal to maybe be used to make metal for a car door or something like that. If you want to chop into equal lengths of metal and it's being unrolled at a constant speed, then you need to chop it at the same time every time so that it's being cut in those equal lengths. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing the blade height to be 0.5 centimeters above the surface, whatever it's chopping on. And then every so often what happens is that blade goes down and chops the metal to cut it up into different pieces, all of equal length. And so this isn't a nice wave, but it is a periodic function because things are being repeated at regular intervals. So what I've done here is I've just added some dotted lines just so you can tell the times a little more clearly. But the whole idea is that we still have this periodic function happening. We can't label some things with this, but we can label some of them still. What we can label is the maximum. The maximum is 0.5 centimeters. The minimum is going to be at zero centimeters where it goes down and chops. We can also label a few other things. We can talk about how long it takes for the blade to go down and back up again. For example, we see here at 0.2 seconds, we chop it initially, we, the blade goes down and then it comes back up at, and finishes coming back up at 0.4 seconds. So it takes 0.2 seconds for a complete chop. 0.2 seconds for a complete chop, for going down and back up again down and back up again. The other thing we can see is we can see that there are um, periods here, right? At 0.2 seconds, it goes down. And then at 0.8 seconds, it goes down again. And then at 1.4 seconds, it goes down again. This distance here is the period. And so that period is equal to 0.6 seconds. So the period is 0.6 seconds. Now you didn't have to label it necessarily from where I did. You could have started from the bottom to the bottom. 0.3 to 0.9 is also 0 0.6. 0 0.9 to 1.5 is also 0 0.6. So the period is 0.6 seconds. The other thing we could label here is that the blade stops from 0.4 seconds to 0.8 seconds. Then it stops again from 1 to 1.4 seconds. So the blade stops for 0.4 seconds at a time, and then it chops for 0.2 seconds. And the last thing we could just note about this, we can't necessarily talk about an amplitude here, but we can note that the blade will strike the surface again at 2.1 seconds. If we carry that period on, every 0.6 seconds it's striking the surface again. So 1.5, if we add 0.6 seconds to that, we're going to get 2.1 seconds. So the blade strikes 
again at 2.1 seconds. And because the period is 0.6, it's going to do that um, at every 0.6 seconds after that. So the last thing I want to note is just a quick example here that looks periodic, maybe because the period is the same, but the amplitude is changing. And so if you have a situation like that, where the period is equal, so the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here, even though the, amp the period is equal here, because the amplitude is changing, that means it is not periodic, not periodic. So it has to repeat at regular intervals with the same amplitude to be periodic. If that was helpful, please like and subscribe, and you can check out the next video all about sinusoidal functions coming right up on the link on your screen.